سورة العلق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Now this is the first ever wahid that came to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم When he was 40 years old and you know for some time his tendency was to keep alone and th thinking and thinking and thinking. To be alone in the cave of Hira. And one night when he was alone there, and please note the words, Ban and normable yaksa. He was in between sleeping and awakeness. Not fully awake, not fully asleep. The first meeting with Jibrail was in that condition. Then a normal yaksa. So Jibrail came. And they say there is one tradition. There was a golden plate. On This was written, these five ayat. He said, read. He said, I am not a reader. Ma'ana bekari. Because if it was from mouth to mouth only, then this answer is not rational. If you have not learned to read, somebody says, say this, you can say this. So that to me appears to be the correct position. That it was a written tablet of gold. On that these five ayat were written. Then when he said, I am not a reader. Mana bepari. So he took the Prophet into his arms, embraced him and squeezed him. So much so that he felt, you know, this effect of squeezing. Then he let him, then again said, read. Again the answer was the same. So he repeated it thrice, embracing him, squeezing him, and then letting him. And then, you know, he read this. So this, this is the first way. And because it was the first experience, a human into direct contact with an angel. This alam e bashariya and alam e malakiya, first time into direct contact. It had so deep effect on him. He was shivering like anything when he came back to his house. High fever, perspiring. And he said to Hazrat Khadija, Zammeluni, Zammeluni, Khashidu ala nafsi. I fear for my life. Now give over me some blanket. Anyhow, this is the first wahi. Ikra. And now here you note, no salah, nothing of this form. Read, read. Ilm, the importance of knowledge. The knowledge that came to Muhammad was not through the worldly means of education. Allamahu Shadidul Quwa. Jibreel was the teacher. He taught him. In some traditions, Israfil remained with him for three years teaching him. Iqra bismi rabbi kallazi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who created. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Created man from a blood clot. I've read this from this translation. But I don't agree with this translation now. This clot and blood clot has no connection with this root and lam kaf. Alaq, mu'allaqa, mu'allaq ho jana, something hanging. So it has been to that stage of embryonic development, when it is like a leech attached to the wall of the womb of the mother, hanging, hanging with the, just like a leech attach, attaches itself to your feet or your legs in the same way. So that was the stage, alaqa. Ikra wa rabbukal akram, read, and your Lord is most bountiful. Alladhi allama bil qalam, who has taught by the pen. What does it mean? The human knowledge, the acquired human knowledge, has been transmitted from one generation to the other through pen. One generation gathers the knowledge, puts it down to writing, it is transferred to the next generation. This way, this acquired human knowledge, this scientific knowledge, this is going up every day. Allah al-insana ma'alam ya'alam. 
He taught man what he knew not. After these five ayat, or three ayat, which I think I have already explained, a person whose own moral, you know, consciousness is very active and living and vibrating, and when he sees to the people, what they are doing, where are they going, what has happened to them? A thinker, a philosopher. In response to what Surah Tutin came, yes, your observation is correct. They have gone down, very much down, down, down. But they were not created at that level. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَرَرْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ Here also, كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى Nay, man surely transgresses the limits. You are doing something wrong to your brother. Treating wrongly your neighbor. Not respecting and serving your parents. You are stealing, you are killing, you are making a nation slave to you, the colonial rule. Verily, in the man does transgress. Your observation is not wrong. What you have seen is correct. But what is the reason? Because man feels and sees himself. He is not questioned, he is not punished, he is not rewarded. I did this thing wrong to him, nothing happened to me. I ate the wealth of the orphan, no cancer to my stomach, not even a blister to my mouth, nothing has happened. This world is incomplete regarding the moral law. It is complete regarding the physical law. If you take poison, you will die. This is the physical law. If you put your head in the fire, it will be burnt. This is the physical law. But when you tell a lie, no blister on your tongue. If you have usurped the wealth of others, nothing will come to you. So this, this world, where these things are not rewarded. The servants of humanity not rewarded. <coughs> Mostly, they were tortured. What happened to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Were they honored? No. So morally speaking, this world is incomplete. It will be complete only in the hereafter. When the moral results will come fully and become manifest. Verily, to your Lord is the return. On returning, every human soul will be recompensed fully. And secondly, this is the guidance. If you want to make this society of yours healthy and good and just, tell people that they have to return to their Lord and face the grand accountability of the Day of Judgment. This is the only remedy. No justice can be established here. No fair deal will ever come here. No just order can ever be established here unless people come to know and believe and they have convinced that they will be resurrected and they will have to stand before their Lord on the Day of Judgment and then they will have to bear the consequences of what they are doing today. Inna ila rabbika This is the only remedy. Now in the rest of the ayat of this surah, in the background is the person of Abu Jahl. I told you Abu Jahl was, in a way, not very bad man. Not from amongst the worst people of Mecca. He had some good qualities. When he was asked, do you think that Muhammad is telling lies? No, no, no. He never told a lie. Then why don't you accept him? No, there was a competition between us and the Banu Hashim. They entertained people in feasts. They fed 
with poor people, we did more than them. So the competition was going on on this thing. Up till now we are going shoulder to shoulder with them. They have not been able to outdo us. But now if we accept Muhammad as messenger of Allah, we shall have to accept slavery for, for all time to come. And this I am not ready to accept. So give the devil his due. He said it plainly. And he was not a miser, as I told you. Ammam Bakhela, that was not in him. But Astagna and Kazaba Bilusna both were there. But had he accepted Islam, what would he have become? Can you imagine? He would have been the second Omar, radiallahu anhu. The traits of the character of Umar and Abu Jal were the same. Same courageousness, same steadfastness, straightforwardness. All these things were there, common. And that is why the Prophet had presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these two persons. Allahumma surah islam Oh my Lord, help Islam, strengthen Islam. By the Islam of one of these two people at least, either Umar ibn al-Khattab or Amr ibn Hisham, which was the name of Abu Jal. Equal. Character states the same. But Allah selected Umar, that's why. Well, it was his lot, and he was rejected. Arayat al yanha. Have you considered the person who is forbidding Abdan Iza Sallah, the servant of ours when he is praying? There are two incidents, you know, quoted that when Muhammad Sassan was praying in the courtyard of Kaaba. So once Abu Jal came and he took a piece of cloth, made a rope out of it and then strangled it round the neck and, you know, then pulled the two ends so that his eyes were coming out. And second time when he was prostrating, he said to those people who were sitting beside him, can anybody go and bring that, you know, the intestines, etc., and stomach of the camel which has been sacrificed over there. And then when Muhammad goes in sajda and prostration, put it on his neck and head. Twice he did it. Arayat al yanha abdan isa sallah. Arayat and kana al huda. Can you imagine if he had been on the guidance of Amara bit taqwa? Or he would have been enjoining other peoples to have fear of God. How good it would have been. But he has adopted the other carrier. Arayata in Kazawatawalla. Have you considered? If he has belied and turned his back, Alam Yalam Bayan Allah Yara, doesn't he know that Allah is seeing him? And note it. He always called upon Allah. Never La Tuza, etc. etc. On the night before Badr, he called upon Allah. Allahumma. Aqtaun Ali Raham, Fainul Gadat. Whosoever has cut our relations, divided our tribe, you humiliate him tomorrow. Allahumma. Not Hubal, not Uzzah, not Laat, not Manat, nothing of this sort. But he charged Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His charge was, he has divided the house of Quraysh. The house divided and in itself cannot stand. We had this position and we still have that position in, in the whole of Arabia. But if we are divided, father separated from the son and son separated from the father. And wife separated from the husband and husband separated from the wife. This, this is what he has done to us. So, but he called upon Allah only. Alam yalam bin Allah yara. Kalla la illam yantahe la nasfam bin asiyah. Nay, if he desists not, if he doesn't give up this attitude of his, we shall seize him by the forelock. Nasiyatin kazimatin khatiyah. 
Here is the wrath of Allah in verse. The forelock which is lying and sinful. Let him call his henchmen, people who keep sitting, you know, in his courtyards, etc. Sadadro Zavaniya, we shall call the angels of the hell. Kalla la to terhu was to waqtarib. Nay. But, O Muhammad, you don't obey him. You go on prostrating before your Lord and trying to get nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to him. Because the Prophet has said, Akrabu ma yakunul abdu ila rabbihi fi sujood. The nearest that a servant can go to his Lord is in the position of Sajda. This is Ayatul Sajda.